So I sat down to read and Fable had to jump on my lap and I can barely get her phone camera, but she's, she's a big girl. <laughs> Maybe she'll go take a nap now. Hi booktube and happy Wednesday. Sorry if you can hear some chewing in the background fable. It's chewing a bone of course but this time it's by my own design because we had to cut our um, two o'clock walk short a bit because I had to go out and run an errand and while I was out I got um, Dutch Brothers. Not that they need any um, <laughs> any promotion by me but on Wednesdays they give out um, free stickers. So I'm just now looking at this and <laughs> It's, um, I don't, is it, I don't know if it's Santa Claus or who is, um, I can't tell who this is and who's like palm tree in, in a snow globe, but, um, uh, I just wanted to show you this cup. Anyway, but on Wednesdays, they, um, the first Wednesday of each month, they give out stickers. So today's sticker is a hippo <laughs> skiing, um, and it has like Dutch Brothers on the little, the skis, and it has like the Dutch Brother logo, but uh, I'm not a big coffee drinker. Um, but if I do go out and get coffee, like Starbucks or Dutch Brothers, I, um, I'll get one of the, like the Frappuccinos, like basically coffee ice cream. So this is a hazelnut truffle mocha, um, and it's really good. Um, it's not too heavily chocolate because the chocolate I think is coming just from chocolate milk, um, which is interesting, but yeah, really tasty. It reminds me of, um, like cookies, like a spiced cookie. Sorry if the camera's jiggling. Actually, now I'm looking at it. Um, <laughs> um, it was moving around. But anyway, yeah, so I gave her uh, a nice big treat because I had to cut her walk short. And it, these, these treats are called, I think they're called busy bones or something. So keeping her busy and occupied. Like, I think I think she's okay with substituting a bit of the walk <laughs> for an extra treat. Anyway, so as far as what I've been up to, I haven't done any reading yet except listen to audiobook because I've been, I've been working. Um, work wasn't bad at all today. Um, I met with a new a new person that I'm going to be working on training and um, it's funny they're moving from upstate New York and they're and go, moving down south and they've never lived in the south they've always lived in the upstate New York region and so they're just done with the, with the snow and, um, and I said oh I've always wanted to visit like New England and that area it sounds you know really pretty um, especially in the fall and she's like no <laughs> she's like it's not worth it like I, I think she's just absolutely done with the snow but it was just funny her, her very strong reaction to it but I, because I think it's because I've never lived in a place that gets any really any significant snow that I've always been curious about it um yeah it's like speaking of like snow globes it's like you know it's like like living in a snow globe I, I, I imagine but um uh, it's different if you go into work but if we work remote then I don't know like I could, I could hack it somehow. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of snow, the book I'm going to be reading, um, The Last Light Breaking uh, by Nick Jans. I, I mentioned the other day, halfway through it, I'm going to finish it today. And it's just a collection of like, it, it, it's not a straight through narrative because it does jump around. He mentions actually in the beginning that it's kind of like how um, this, these group of people, the um, in, in up Hewitt, in, um, Eskimos, how they kind of tell their stories. It's like a like she talks about like, you know tree tree rings. <laughs> you go through a circle, but it eventually comes back, and you know you get the whole picture, kind of thing. So it's jumping around in the, in the timeline here, but yeah, it's pretty good. And so from there, um, oh, I finished um, this book last late last night, A Regency Christmas, and this is a collection. Speaking of, you know, um, a collection of stories. This is a collection of of short not short stories, but they're like. 70-ish pages each and from all of these different Regency authors. And this book came out in the 90s, 95, 1995, and um, from, from Signet. And I like the Signet romance, Regency romances. Oh, I have one right here. Let me show you. So here's one, for example, um, because they're kind of like reading Pride and Prejudice. There's no like adult content and it's very much like the Regency um, era, we, you know, there's there's lords and dukes and whatnot, and there's like you know balls, and and so I do like that, and like there's a lot of banter between them, but this I didn't I didn't care for. For example, like the very last story by an author I do recognize, and it's called the Surprise Party, by let me see here, what is the name of the author? Mary Below for that one. It's funny, like they give you this list here, but they're not in order as actually how they're published. But anyway, I've, I've recognized this author. I don't think I've read anything about her before. Maybe I have, but um, I've seen her name before. But the story, I immediately didn't like the main characters that the two people were supposed to be rooting for here because there are three orphans 
and they're basically like the aunt of one side and the uncle of the other like they're both single you know and they're not related to each other but um orphans of like the parents of the kids died and so they're having to come together to decide what to do with the three orphans but they don't neither one of them like kids it starts out like what am I gonna do with these kids they're gonna ruin my life blah 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 and so like they just put me off and there's a couple, a couple of other stories like talking about rakes and so it, um so it it opens up with one of them where there's um a rake who has this horrible um rumor around town about him and how he's he's no good he's not reliable at all you know as a as a um as a suitor for women but we're so he's, he's like we're supposed to be rooting for him and he's going into these different like brothels and I'm just like it's, there's no adult content in these books at all and it, it, you know but but just the people I, I didn't like the people in, in any of these stories unfortunately you would think at one of these I would like but just didn't but I still have hopes um <laughs> for these signet regency romances this just, the cover was it was really cute and delightful but the, the stories weren't unfortunately so, you know the writing can only I mean <laughs> the covers can only do so much for me um, but I got through that and then um, after I finished this one because I do like it for for Christmas books I wanted to have like one of these like romance books on the go because like when I was looking through my shelves to find Christmas books or winter themed books so many of the Christmas books were romances and so I'm like why not go with, with the next one and just keep them kind of like on the go and not heavily focus on them because like right now this is going to be my focus but just have it like pick it up here and there so this one is Christmas in a Snowstorm by Lois Richer a love inspired inspirational romance which means that it's christian based and the characters are of the christian faith or they are you know coming into it or what have you and so this one is can they weather the holidays together um it says will love turn home for christmas into home for good so let's see here returning home to his montana family ranch um sam calhoun who's a journalist volunteers to run the local christmas festival but as a snowstorm drives him closer to Joy, a single mom helping him with the project, the last thing he expects is for her children to decide. Oh, here's Fable. Oh, Mia. Oh, you're a good girl. Mia. You want to come over here and camera stick and pull her over just a little bit? Oh, she's such a big girl. Oh, yeah. There she is. Oh, yeah. She's like, no, no, no. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I feel like they're getting trapped in this town. Um, during a snowstorm and they um, I'm guessing joy can't return home since he is um, but yeah we'll see what I think of this one and let's see here what else do I have and then if I if I finish this one the last light breaking I'm gonna move on from Alaska to Michigan this is about it says a new home by Carolyn M Kirkland I, I just I just love like the old timey feel to it with like the um author in the back and let me see here. When was this published? I think it was an older book. Published in 1953. But I just wonder um, if, if maybe maybe this edition was 1983. But it came out earlier. Okay, yeah. 18, the, um, here on the dust jacket here. It says in 1839 this book was uh, published. And it caused a sensation in America and in England. Um, it's um, often called the she's um, the author. It's called the mother of Midwestern realism. Um, so it's like a very lightly fictionalized tale of the Michigan frontier. So I am very curious about this. And basically, I'm gonna read it as like you know nonfiction, um, maybe with like the names changed or something like that. But there, oh, there's also some pictures in here. Let's see if I can show some of them. So like a log tavern and. Oh yeah, and here's a, here's another cabin in Michigan. So yeah, these are all like real pictures. Like, so uh, here's the author, and it's like um, a, a plot of um. So this is taking this town is Putnam, Michigan. I'll have to see um where this is. Okay, but anyway, so I'm obviously not gonna finish this tonight, but I'm just gonna start it. Um, and then it's for my audiobook because I'm trying to encapsulate all the books I'm reading. And I, I always forget audiobooks. But right now, I am listening to Rilla of Ingleside by Ella Montgomery, the last and final book um, of the Anna Green Gables series. I'm finally going to finish this series. I've I've never have before. And I'm like, why not end <laughs> 2023 by finishing uh, that series? And it's all thanks to the More Montgomery Challenge that was happening back in November. And so I'm just like wanted to carry on my Anne reading because 
I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I can never get enough of Anne. I just, I love, like, it was the first book. And I just, yeah, I really want to rewatch the TV series, the mini series, like from the 80s or 90s, I believe. I didn't care at all for the Netflix adapt adaptation. Well, I, it was okay, but they, they twist things around and just the vibe, the tone was much darker and grim than the actual tales. Like I, when I read um, Ellen Montgomery's diaries last year, I read the first, it was like, um, I think there's like five or six volumes and they were like 300, 400 pages each. I um, mean, I read the first two or three and let me tell you, Ellen Montgomery's life um, is nowhere as ideal and nice and quaint as her Anne of Green Gables series or any of her books are because she often dealt with lots of, um, she dealt with lots of depression, but also um, the family that she was raised in wasn't very kind to her at all. Her, when she eventually got married, it wasn't, she even acknowledged from the day one, the day before she was married, for example, that this, this man she was marrying um, wasn't her soulmate at all. And she just liked him enough. But then as they go on in the marriage, she just like, yeah, it's just, it's not a happy marriage. Her kids, her children, um, one of them, as it gets older, is just horrifying, <laughs> to be honest. So she's like, oh my gosh. And like, in a way, in a way, uh, I wouldn't say horrifying. It's not like the worst, but bad enough. But uh, in a way, <laughs> sorry, I get all these like random tangents. So yeah, I'm going to go off and I think, I'm feeling very rambly and like energetic thanks to this coffee because I don't drink I don't drink like I said I miss it. I don't drink coffee hardly at all and even with tea outside of these like having calendars and whatnot um I don't drink caffeine on tea I, I drink herbal teas um because yeah I, I don't I don't need the extra energy I have enough energy um <laughs> on my own to need not need to speed it up um oh but that reminds me for the advent calendars because I'm having this treat I'm going to skip the tea advent today and the chocolate calendar and then just resume it tomorrow. Um, and it's funny, like I was thinking to myself earlier, I was like, I'm not doing too good on these advent calendars because I didn't even start day one, you know, December 1st on day one for the advent. I started on the second. So now here I am skipping a day and the chocolate one I was I'm missing here and there. Um, Cause I don't want to eat too many sweets. And I had think I, that one of the days I skipped, I had, um, I'd already eaten a sweet thing, but, um, but yeah, so, and then also thinking, like, I'm already making plans for my um, trip later this month, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with those advent calendars. Like, am I going to bring them all with me or, or what? But yeah, I'll fill you in later on, on what's going on with that. I'm, I'm still, I'm hoping to finalize my trip plans today and get everything booked and reserved. So then I'll share with you tomorrow. Keep me accountable to, to that because it's so easy for me to like, oh yeah, I'll get to it the next day, get to the next day. And I just know Christmas and the end of the year is going to be here before I know it. So I, I got to get a move on. But anyway, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, book two.